Ah, bien, bien. We're trying to help build not professional rugby players, but people who are going to be the leaders of our communities in the future. We were down there a year and a half ago, and I was sitting with one of the players, uh, Andrew Purdy, one of the players' parents. He said, what do you think we could do here? I said, you know, it would be really great if we could take one of these kids from the poorest of poor barriers. I mean, people don't realize how poverty-stricken some of these barriers are, and bring them up and give them an experience like Shawnigan Lake School. Carlos! Ah. <laughs> how are you doing, buddy? I'm just... I haven't seen you in like, oh my god. Uh, I'm so happy, man. Oh my gosh. How are you? Scarlett, how old are you? It's a big welcome, huh? Come here. Yeah? Great to have you here. Yeah? Thank you so much. Yeah, it's, uh, you must be tired, huh? Yeah, and so tired, but uh, I don't care. I big smile. Really yeah. yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Like the sweatshirt, too. Huh? You know, for a long time now, Carl um, and I have been, have been um, sort of forming partnerships in all sorts of ways to get things done, to give kids this opportunity. Um, you know, mostly kids from Saskatchewan uh, that he has known and that, would, that he knows would benefit from this type of opportunity. So when this one came up, um, we were fortunate that one of our parents was on the trip and agreed to become a partner in the whole venture as well. And of course, as always, because we all know the fiscal realities of life, you, you, you sometimes need more than one partner to, to make it happen. And we've been able, through the combination of, of the howlers, Carl himself, one of our parents, and the school, to put it, to put it together for Carlos and, and to give him this, this, this year. And who knows where this year will lead, because this year may lead to more than just this year. So accommodation is spearheaded by Andrew Purdy uh, and then the Dog River Howlers and Shawnigan Lake School. Who We then looked for a candidate and with the help of the Columbian Rugby Union and Damon Weigel again, then we decided on after being down there last year that Carlos would be the man. And then once we decided on him, then in turn what happened is that we did the Howlers and funded for him to go to a private English school down there to learn English. He's up here now and uh, I, I talk to him pretty regularly and he's like, his eyes are still bulging. He just, to Tim, this is surreal. It's still really happening. Somebody's going to pinch him and he's going to wake up. Coming to Shawnigan will just widen his horizons. He is going to make friendships that are going to be lifelong. And those friendships will stretch to every corner of the globe. The, the wonderful thing about um, welcoming Carlos into this community is that the opportunities are great for every student from all walks of life. I mean, the academic side of things, certainly the sports, the howlers, of course, has been a big part of Carlos's life up until now and has been life-changing for him in that it's the, because of the howlers, uh, that's the main reason Carlos is with us today. He's ready to go. Yeah. Hey. Thank you very much. Carlos. <laughs> so what does that mean? Is it good? Yeah, I'm really happy for He's running for, I don't know. And so exciting, yeah. Tomorrow, tomorrow, first day. The first day, um, it's different. Yeah, it's different. So last day of dinner, uh, you joined me in welcoming Carlos from Colombia. It's great to have him among us. And I just touched on the fact that Carlos comes to us through the good auspices. Um, of, of the Howlers, which is the Dog River, River Howlers. Now, a number of our students have actually gone on tour and represented the Howlers. Because the Howlers is all about 
taking the game of rugby and extending its potential to do good in societies and in the world. And that's what that's become its mantra, that uh, it, it's not just about rugby, it's, it's much more than that. Um, so, you know, we're delighted to have been a part of the whole Howlers movement right since the beginning. Thanks everybody, get on with the good work that you intend to get on with. Well, the, the values that underscore our approach to rugby are the values that really that underscore our approach to life, right? So, so it ties in perfectly for us, being a way of life, because working at Seanigan is a way of life. The staff will, will, will chuckle when you say to them, is this a job? And they say, no, not really, it's a way of life. You know, we're a community of 600 plus people. It's a small village. Can you take, uh, actually, carry on with this, I'll give you this. So I get a percentage here, 43.2. 43.2% water. Now, if you've got soil that's 43.2% water, what kind of soil have you got? What's, it, what's that soil like? It's mud. <laughs> I mean, it's not total mud. It's not, but a it's, casual little um, pep talk in the corridor. The, uh, at the end of a rugby practice, at uh, the end of another uh, rehearsal, whatever, whatever. The, the, all these teachable moments are taking place. And that's why, that's why it makes it a way of life. So way of life functions extremely well for us. It's a good food. I like the salmon, I like the turkeys. It's, it's something new. Yeah? And I, I have to try everything because it's a new experience, new culture, new food. It was a long trip. It was a long flight because uh, I fly from Medellin to Panama, to Panama, uh, Mexico City. Um, the last one was Victoria. Oh, it was so long. I was so tired. But uh, when I got to Chanigan, oh, and I saw a Dean, Dean, my friend, he gave me a big hug. Oh, he, oh, everything changed. I, I got, he, I get happy for saw him. He's, he's a really nice guy. He's really like, you can tell he's really determined to do good things. And he's like, he, the opportunity he's given, he's made the most of it all. And I really, I really admire that about him, especially because he's like, he's coming from basically nothing. He's coming from a place where they, he lives with his aunt and his uncle. He's not, his dad left him and his mom, he doesn't see his mom that often. And he's, it's, it's just kind of one of those things you have to just kind of sit back and just think about. It's like, you know, Obviously, I left and I was sad, but like, look, think about what he's leaving behind. He's leaving so much. He's like, he's, he's just a whole new world to him. And like, me and him have been, he's been a really good friend of mine because he just, I don't know, we get each other. He's a really nice guy. And he's just, you know, he's obviously, when he came, he was out of his comfort zone and he was, he was the, I was the only one he had to, uh, to talk to. So what I did at first, I just kind of sat back and I want him to meet new people because that's the whole point of him coming there. But no, he's... He's, he's made as big of an impact on my life as he's, I've made on his, I hope, at least. Imagine the difference this is going to make in his life. He's already said, I mean, he's getting a world-class education. He's with other kids, and hopefully this will be a building block for him 